Hello everyone, it's Jim from Valves and More, a small online vintage tube retailer. And today we're going to talk about tube rolling for beginners. Part 1. So, what the heck is tube rolling? Well, in its simplest form, it's taking the same type of tube and swapping a different tube in the same type. So, these three are all 6L6s, or close equivalents. This is a vintage 6L6, made by Philco. It's an absolutely beautiful tube. It's one of my favorite 6L6s. You may notice the Coke bottle shape. This is probably 1940s World War II vintage. If it had a date code on it, we could get close to an actual date. It doesn't. And um, it's got the same electrical properties as these other two 6L6s. This is a metal tube. Isn't that fun? There's no glass inside. It's all designed to seal up inside the metal case. These were made for heavy-duty applications, so industrial, military applications. Maybe you needed a 6L6 in a bomber or in a tank or somewhere at a gun battery or in a factory that had lots of percussion and you didn't want to have glass around. Anyways, these can be used for audio, but the it's not commonly done, and mm, I'm not going to say that they don't sound good, because I'm certain some metal tubes do sound good, but I'll leave that for you to decide. You can always try one, and this is a modern Russian equivalent of this. It's not an exact 6L6, it's in fact a 6P3S-E. And you might notice here that the, 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 Ru the Russian letters are, in fact, different. And that's because even though the Cyrillic alphabet uses the same um, basic letters uh, as our alphabet in the West, the, many of the letters actually are not, are not the same. They translate to <laughs> a different letter. So, for example... You'll see EB at the end as an extension on a tube that is a mil spec or heavy duty spec tube. And then it trans e EB translates from the Cyrillic to EV in English. So, anyways, this is a, you can see the symbol here perhaps. Let's see if we can get it closer. Looks sort of like a house combined with an egg or a box with an egg. This is a reflector tube. This is one of my favorite modern, new old stock 6L6s. They just sound wonderful, especially in single-ended amps. You can see it's got what's called a coin base, which is the last, mm, the last improvement, shall we say, of the octal base, whereas this is a standard full base for an octal tube. So, that's a selection of 6L6s. Electrically they're all the same, but sonically they're going to be different. We'll talk about that in a minute. So these are our power output tubes. Here are small signal tubes that are very common as well. 12AX7s. So here is one of the most sought after 12AX7s. It's a Bugle Boy, made in Holland. And I don't know if you can see it, but a real Bugle Boy has an etched, acid etched date code on the shoulder. And you can go online and you can get the, um, the code manual that will tell you what that code breaks down to. What plant, uh, what date, maybe what variation on the tube, what tube type. And a Bugle Boy has a very poorly printed uh, image on here and all you can see that's left is sort of the bugle or the horn but with that acid etch date code and an identification of the plates visually you would know that that's a bugle boy 
what else have we got here? Here's a very standard, um, let's go to this one. This is an ECC83. That's the European equivalent of a 12AX7. It's the same tube, different numbering system. In Europe they used ECC, they'll use, um, oh, what are the other ones that you'll see? You'll see, instead of ECC83, you might see E83CC. And they flip them around just to to change uh, a designation from being a standard tube to a preferred series tube. So this happens to be a gold lion made in Russia. You can see the gold lion, hence its name. Genelex is the parent company. And this tube and this tube the Beulah Boy, and this this tube, which is a um, variant of the 12AX7. This is a Sylvania Gen 5751, and this is a higher spec 12AX7 designed, among other things, for uh, the aero industry, uh, for avionics. So it's basically a heavy-duty 12AX7. All these tubes are very similar. So tube rolling is when I pull out my gold line. If I have a pair of them, let's say in a phono preamp, then I, I'm going to pull out my pair of gold lines and I would put in a matched set of bugle boys, which would be glorious. But maybe I want to try um, for some other aspects of the sound uh, signature, and I might try the 5751. Uh, maybe the 5751 is better known for low noise. So that, that brings up a, a good question. So what are we trying to do? What are we trying to achieve when we tube roll? We might be trying to change um, the sonics. We might be trying to improve them or, or just change them. Maybe we want to improve the bass, the mid-range, the high frequency, the sound stage, um, the noise level, um, or the clarity. There's there's lots of different reasons to try different tubes. Um, and looking at how different these look, even though electrically they're supposed to be very similar, this is a close equivalent. It's not an identical 6L6, but the Russians basically made a, a, essentially a copy of the, the Western 6L6. Um, so anytime you change out a tube, even in a similar series, you might see a change in sonics. But going from this to this, you can imagine that there would be substantial changes, maybe, maybe huge changes, maybe better, maybe worse. Sometimes it just goes laterally and you, you find that you, you, you gain a little bit in the mid range and you lose a little bit in the base. So, there's a couple of options. One is that you can just simply take a 12AX7, both of these are 12AX7s, and swap another 12AX7. And that's a good first approach. But another option is to go with a close equivalent. And that's valid as well. So long as the tube is electrically very similar, there's no reason why you can't do that. How do you start? Well, I think you should start with a goal. What are you trying to achieve? Do you want a clear, crisp base to replace the muddy base that you're experiencing? Um, or do you want to really reduce the noise level of your phono preamp? In which case you're going to do some research and you'll look for a low noise 12AX7. Um, and that that's really where it should start. I would start online, I do some research, decide what you want to try to achieve. And there's nothing wrong with just trying to achieve better. I mean, I'm an audiophile. I've been an audiophile for, oh my god, I've been an audiophile for 40 some years, um, and I'm always trying to achieve better. Um, so there's nothing wrong with trying to achieve just better. Um, 
but uh, do your research online. Look at the tubes that people talk about and recommend as a good starting point. Or another good option, I get emails from customers and they'll say, Jim, I've got, I'm really disappointed in my current preamp. I think I could do better. I've got 12AU7s, 12AX7s, 6SN7s, whatever the preamp tube is I've got. Can you make some recommendation? This is what I have. This is what I'm hearing or not hearing. And with thousands of tubes in the store and the ability to pull a tube, and in many cases I have a custom amp, I can just simply listen to the tube for the customer. In fact, if I have an amp for the tubes that you buy, I listen to them for noise level and for quality prior to shipping. And I, I'll do the same thing if you are looking for certain properties in a tube. Many of my tubes I know intimately. Not all of them, because when you have thousands of tubes in stock, that's just not possible. But that's another good option, is just to send off an email. Rather than buying, you know, half a dozen various tubes that look interesting, get some recommendations. And, um, and I think that's all for... Beginner tube rolling part one. And if you've listened this far, watch this far. How about a little bonus? There we go. Feel free to use those discount codes. And we'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Jim, signing out.